This is Lesson 10, Calculating Slope, Activity 1, Integer Operation Review. And you are given three problems, and it says find values for A and B that make each side have the same value. All right, so you're going to find values for A and B that make this side equal to negative 2, A and B that make this side equal to positive 2, and A minus B or the difference between A and B that make this side negative 2. So I'm going to start out thinking about this as constant of proportionality, because that's what we've been doing for a long time. So if you imagine A being Y and B being X, Y divided by X, or A divided by B, or A over B, or the ratio of A to B, however you want to say it, that is equal to negative 2. And what that means is that A is twice is two times b, but it's the opposite of that. It's a negative two times b. So if you take a and you divide it by b, you're going to get an answer of two, but then you have to remember that it's the opposite of two, or it's a, the answer is actually negative two. And so now you can just say that a is a negative two times b, and then you can just write it. a equals a negative two times b. So now let's select some values for b and calculate what a will be based on that selection. So let's make b, no actually this is reminding you that um, it is the opposite of 2b. So you can pull out the negative 1. Whenever you see a negative 1 as a factor that means that the product is the opposite of um, the, the second factor, the factor being multiplied by negative 1. So I always, I, a lot of times I always say for negative 1, the opposite of 2b. So negative 1 times 2b is the same as the opposite of 2b. All right, so now let's select a value for b. Um, let's say that b is equal to 3. So what's a going to be based on that? Well, a is 2 times 3, which is 6. But then it's the opposite of 6. So it's a negative 1 times 6, which is negative 6. And to prove that, let's replace um, a with negative 6, b with 3, negative 6 divided by 3. And that's equal to the opposite of 6 divided by 3. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And what's the opposite of 2? The opposite of 2 is negative 2. So it works. So negative 6 divided by 3. And so notice once again that the 6 is twice the value of 3, and it's the opposite of that. Now let's try another one. Let's make it a little bit harder and choose b as a negative value. So b is a negative 5. Well, if b is negative 5, what's 2 times negative 5? It's negative 10. If I have 5 things and 2 times those 5 things, it's going to give me 10 things. In this case, they are negatives. I have five negatives. And I want two times that. I want twice as many. That means I have 10 negatives. Well, A is going to be the opposite of negative 10. What's the opposite of negative 10? Positive 10. All right, so let's check that, see if it works. So A is positive 10. B is negative 5. A positive 10 divided by a negative 5. So remember, this is a review of operations with integers. So you can view this as the opposite of 10 divided by 5. What's 10 divided by 5? Positive 2. What's the opposite of positive 2? Negative 2. So that one works as well. And if you look at the ratio as it's set up, you can see that A is twice the value of B. But then when you um, work this out, it's going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be a negative 2 instead of a positive 2. All right, the next problem, 2 is um, really the uh, essentially the same problem, only the ratio is a positive 2, not a negative 2. It's a little bit easier to work with because you don't have to think about taking the opposite of those values, unless you choose negative values down here, which I did, so we'll get to that in a moment. So the ratio of a to b is 2. So what that tells you is that a is 2 times the value of b. So a is 2 times b. So now you can just write that. A equals 2B, and choose B as positive 3, just like we did over here. 
So two times three is six, same as over here, but so, but a is positive six. You don't have to take the, it's not the negative, it's not the opposite of six, it's just positive six. Plug it in, six divided by three, of course, is equal to two. Uh, let's choose, make it a little bit harder once again, let's choose b as negative five. Well, what's two times negative five? What that means is that two times five is 10, and then the answer is the opposite of a positive 10, which is negative 10. So what it means when you have a negative factor. So you can remove that negative factor, remove the negative one, do the multiplication, two times five is 10, and it's the opposite of that. Another way to look at this is if I have five negatives, these things that are negative, and I have twice as many, I now have 10 of those things that are negative. So the answer is negative 10. All right, so a is negative 10. Negative 10 divided by negative 5. Well, you can pull out the negative 1. Negative 10 is the opposite of positive 10. Negative 5 is the opposite of positive 5. You can factor out the negative 1s, and you're left with 10 divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so that works as well. And you can look over here and see if I have um, half as many negative things, half as many things, they just happen to be negative things, then I have twice as many um, on the top. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so you can look at this and tell that 10 is twice the value of 5, but they are both negatives. Let's say it that way. All right, the last problem is instead of the operation being multiplication and division, the operation is subtraction. And we refer to subtraction, and the author, authors would like you to think of subtraction, this comes from seventh grade, as the difference between two values. And so you would say this problem as, what's the difference between A and B? And that is equal to negative two. So you'd say the difference between A and B is negative two. So now if I use three and five, what that means is on a number line, if I take two values that are two units apart, the difference is two units, if I take the larger value and subtract that from the smaller value, I'm going to get a negative answer. I'm gonna get negative two. So the way we've been thinking about this to find the change in y and the change in x, the change in the vertical direction and the change in the horizontal direction, is we've been going to the end and subtracting from the end value the beginning value. So we're going to go to the end, which is 3, subtract from this end value the beginning value. So we're going to start at 5, and we're going to end at 3. So that's going to be 3 minus that 5. And the difference of 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And notice what you're doing for the arrow. If you, you draw an arrow diagram, you're moving two units to the left. That's two units in the negative direction. So that answer is a negative 2. And another way of saying this is, what's the difference of 3 from 5? So you're going from 5 to 3. And so... If I have three things and I find the difference between those three things and five things, that answer is negative two. And to calculate this, I didn't write this in here, but you can also look at this as three plus a negative five. And now I'm gonna have to review that. I'm actually gonna do that a little bit down here. But if I have numbers with opposite signs, uh, three, and a negative 5, I subtract the values, the absolute values of that. 5 minus 3 is 2, and it takes on the sign of the larger value. Sorry about that, I didn't write that down, although I did down here. We're going to do another example down here. All right, which is right here. All right, so let's try two different values where both of the values are negative integers. How about negative 8 and negative 6? So what I'm looking for right now is that two integers that are two units apart, so I place them on the number line, negative 8 and negative 6. And the problem says, what's the difference between a negative 8 and negative 6? That means that the negative 8 is the ending value, and the negative 6 is the starting value. So now you're going to draw an arrow from negative 6 to negative 8. 
So that's two units in the negative direction. So that answer is negative two. So negative eight, the difference between negative eight and negative six is negative two. Now, if I have eight negative things and I take away six negative things, I'm going to end up with two negative things. If I have eight apples and I take away six apples, I'm going to end up with two apples. If I have eight negatives and I take away six negatives, I'm going to end up with two negatives. Now, the way of thinking about that is instead of subtracting, you can use the inverse operation, which is addition, and the additive inverse, which is the additive inverse of negative six is positive six. So this is going way back to seventh grade. So a negative eight plus positive six, these are um, integers with different signs or opposite signs. The way to calculate that is you find the difference between those two absolute values. So I have eight units and I have six units. Forget the signs for a moment. So what's eight minus six? Eight minus six is two. And this is gonna take the sign of the larger value because I have more of those. So that answer is gonna be a negative two. I have to review this a little bit, do a few practice problems. And let's look at one that's a little bit odd. How about negative one and positive one? It crosses zero. So what's the difference between negative one and positive one? They are two units apart. So you place them on the number line. So zero is gonna be right in the middle. And so what's the difference between negative one and positive one? So that's gonna be a negative one minus a positive one or the difference between them. The answer is gonna be negative two because you're going from positive one to negative one. So you're ending at negative one, you're starting at positive one. And so the number of units from positive one to negative one is two units going in the negative direction. So it's negative two. Now, the operation, you can view this as using the inverse operation, which is addition, and the additive inverse of positive one is negative one. So negative one plus a negative one, they're both negatives, you're just adding more negatives. So now you have two negatives instead of one negative. So that answer is negative two. So this takes a lot, there's a lot of review. They want this to be pretty quick. It's not gonna be pretty quick. Um, so maybe we can come up with some practice problems to help you out on that.